Wow, great music. Yeah, Brother Bill said that uh, you don't need to preach anymore. We just need the invitation. Yeah, music is great, but there's no substitute for the preaching of the Word of God. Amen. Uh, yeah, our uh, preacher uh, this morning, he's been here for m many times, right? Many times. He preached for us. And the uh, uh, first time I met him was at pastor school, and I went to their church in Iowa. And me and my family, and I think Brother Roy, Brother Roy, yeah, because I'm also bro Brother Roy, yeah, yeah, he was there. And uh, he was then the uh, pastor, the youth pastor of their church, and Pastor Cecil Ballard uh, is their pastor. And there, the first time I met Brother Moore at the restaurant, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Both of them carried guns when I met them. Because uh, they're wanted by the law, you know. And uh, no, 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 they're good people. And uh, he, he was still pastoring uh, when when I met him there. But I really praise God that he went into evangelism. Right now, he is an evangelist, and uh, he is uh, he is still in the uh, he's still working with the uh, um, FBI and the and the uh, 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 police work in uh, in Louisiana and uh, uh, please pray for him and uh, he his uh, his wife has also some physical problem but uh, we need to pray for her you know pray for her and uh, uh, right now he's helping the uh, our police officers here in this uh, in, in in Laguna particularly in Laguna uh, uh, province you know at siya po ay tumutulong sa mga kapulisan and is bringing some is bringing some uh, uh, vest you know bulletproof vest uh, for the uh, police officers and uh, continue to pray for him that is his that is one of his ministries but that's why he is here in our country and uh, but above all the main uh, thing of his ministry is the preaching of the gospel amen he loves souls he loves souls and he loves Filipino souls. Amen. That's, I mean, I'm really thankful to God for these two men here. They are really, they, they, ha, they, uh, they have really a heart for the Filipinos. And uh, that's why they are here. All right. Well, uh, his name is Evangelist Bill Graham. Not Billy Graham, Bill Graham. In Filipino, mamaya malalaman ninyo, mga kapatid, Michael De La Cruz. Maintindihan nyo mamaya kung bakit, okay? And uh, that's the Filipino word for Bill Graham. Michael De La Cruz. Yeah, alright. Alright, you ready for the preaching of the Word of God? Amen! Are you ready to rumble? Shall we all stand please? And let's welcome back in our pulpit, Evangelist Bill Graham. Amen. All right, all right. Good morning. All right, I'm excited to be here this morning. You may be seated, please. Be seated. All right. Well, this is my 10th time I've been in the Philippines. I've been here 10 separate times coming over and preaching the gospel, but this is the first time that I was in this church where you had air condition. Amen. Praise the Lord for air condition. All right. What a, what a blessing it is to be here. I, I have a question, though, and I don't know the answer to this question, Pastor. Who is in charge of the choir? Who, who directs the choir? John Gill. Where's John Gill? He's in junior church. Man, I want to tell him what a great job that was. And, Man, I tell you what, I want to hear it again. Amen. That was fantastic. And uh, what a blessing it is. I like music that will get you ready for the preaching. Amen. So I appreciate that. Uh, I want to say thank you to your pastor. He has been my friend now for many years. Uh, he came to um, Iowa when I was there as assistant pastor. He came and fellowshiped with us and preached for us and then... Uh, he's been a he's been, uh, uh, second time there, and this is probably the, the fourth or fifth time that I've been in this church to preach. 
And what a great work you have here. What a great work and all these people. What a blessing it is. So thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to stand in your pulpit. It's an honor for me to stand in a man of God's pulpit and preach the word. It is an honor for me. So thank you so much, Pastor. I appreciate that very much. Uh, I see uh, uh, the, the men in the blue here. Are they in the, uh, what, what brand? Navy? You're in the Navy. Are you in uh, basic training? Is that what it is? Or are they in training? They're tra What's that? Just graduated. All right. Well, uh, uh, let's give them a hand, soldiers. Amen. I remember when I was in the Army, I attended a church on Sunday. It was one of the greatest, exciting things that took place in my heart while I was in the Army. And so thank you, men, for coming. And uh, I pray that your careers will be successful and that you will serve the Lord with all your heart. Amen. And so that's good. If you have your Bible, by the way, that would be the King James Bible. All right. This off and turn this on. Okay, I want you to turn it to anywhere because it's all good. Amen. All right. Jude, the book of Jude, chapter one. There's no chapter two, so all right. Jude, Jude, chapter one. If you would stand with the reading of God's word this morning, Jude, chapter one. We're gonna look at one verse. We're going to look at one verse, one verse. Let's read what it says here, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I pray that you would bless the reading of your word. I pray that you would use me to speak the message that you gave to my heart to preach here today. Lord, I pray that as anyone here in this auditorium under the sign of my voice, and if they're not saved, that today would be the day of salvation. Lord, we ask you to watch over God and bless all that's being done around the property, Lord, the young people being preached to. Thank you for the wonderful songs prepared our hearts. Lord, just use me. Hide me behind the cross. Give me power from on high. Find Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We living in a day today. Now, I know i got to talk kind of slower because uh, uh, my I, I'm from the south. And uh, so we have a little draw. So maybe sometimes people have a difficulty understanding my English. But we live in a day when it's no longer popular to preach on the subject of hell. People don't like hearing about it. I am old school. I grew up under a great men of God preaching. My pastor when I started out was uh, B.G. Buchanan. And you probably don't know him. I know you know him and you know of him. Uh, he passed away about three months ago. But he preached the word. Amen. And so, uh, uh, you know, but hell is real. There was uh, an evangelist who shares my name, Billy Graham. Back at the end of his life, he stood in a pulpit one day and said, you know, there's no such thing as hell. And I tell you this morning that the Word of God says there is a place called hell, and people will go there if they never accept Christ as their Savior. And so I want you to understand, it's not popular preaching, but it is true. More and more each day, preachers are telling people that there is no fire in hell. But I'm here to tell you, hell is a place of fire. And it doesn't matter what preachers say. And it doesn't matter what evangelists say. And it doesn't matter what Bible teachers say. But what does matter is what this book says. No opinions trump this, all right? So you need to understand it. So, uh, you know, nothing trumps that. But it may not be a popular thing to preach about this morning, about hell. Uh, uh, you cannot read a Bible without coming to the conclusion that hell is real. As a matter of fact, the main job 
of this church and any real Bible-believing church is to be a soul winner, to preach the gospel so people can go to heaven and not go to eternal flame and fire. The Bible tells us in Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. I'll tell you what, I said this uh, a couple times this last week and I'll say it again. The Philippines are prepared, this country is prepared to make the biggest difference in this world by preaching the gospel all over the world. You are in a place in a condition by the way you love God, you're going to reach people for the cause of Christ. The Bible tells us over and over again of the smoldering fires of hell. In Luke chapter 16, verse 23, if you want to turn there, it tells us in hell he lifts up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off That verse alone tells us that there is a place called hell. The warnings of the Bible from cover to cover tells us that there is a permanent and eternal, smoldering, smoky, fiery hell for people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Savior. You may know Jesus in your mind, but you may not know him in your heart. The Bible says that the devil know about Jesus and they tremble but it does not mean that they're, they're going to go to heaven and if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart this morning and if you die today you will go to eternal flame for your rest of eternity and nobody can pay your way out like some religions try to teach no one can pray you out you must make that decision here while you're breathing. Nobody knows about death like I know about death. I have been a police officer for 32 years. I'm still a police officer. And, and I am a part of a violent crime unit right now. And all I do is we get together and we hunt down the worst of the worst. Matter of fact, I was sitting in the pastor's office checking my work emails. And there was three murders last night in my town. Now you say, why are you saying that? Because tomorrow is not guaranteed for anybody in here. So you better, while the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to your heart, while the Holy Spirit of God is stirring the water, when you feel convicted, when you feel the desire and the need to get saved, you better get saved. The Bible tells us that when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you better move. You better move. Hey, the reason why I'm preaching about hell today is that if anyone here today is not saved, I want you to realize there is a place that you will go. And I can't imagine the pain and the suffering forever and ever and ever. Secondly, for those of you that are already saved, I want you to understand, maybe you have a mother or a father or a brother or a sister or a co-worker, or a neighbor, or a friend, or someone at the store that you see all the time but you've never, ever told them about Christ. This message this morning is to encourage you to be faithful, to be a soul winner. The greatest thing you could ever do is be a soul winner, amen? Tell people about Christ.
Do you know somebody that needs Jesus and you've never told them? Your hands will be bloody hands one day at the judgment seat if you don't tell people about Jesus and you know them and they die and they go to hell judgment, you'll have bloody hands, the Bible says. And then if you're here this morning and you've heard the preaching before, you've heard the message before, or maybe you haven't heard the message before, you're a first-time visitor here. Praise the Lord for first-time visitors. Amen. But if you've never heard the gospel before and you're going to hear it this morning, you better come running down and ask Jesus Christ to save you today because tomorrow is not guaranteed for anybody. The young person who was murdered in my town last night that I got the email was 27 years old. Just 27. Hey, hey, I want you to understand uh, I want you to show you who the inhabitants of hell will be. So you're sitting there wondering, I wonder who's going to be there in hell. Let me tell you. I read to you in Jude chapter 1 verse 4. But let me read it again. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men will be in hell. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. If God were to ask you what kind of people do you think would go to hell, what would you say? See, a lot of people think there's going to be parties going on in hell. There will be no parties. The devil will deceive you to think that you are going to have parties in hell. There will not be parties in hell. Well, what does God consider ungodly? You're, you're telling, you, I just told you ungodly. So what's ungodly? Let me tell you. Turn your Bible to Revelation 21. The Revelation 21, the last book of the Bible. Look what it says. You there? Look. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerer. That's not, that's not me. And I said, no idolaters. And you go, I don't, I don't worship anything but God in heaven not me, but let me show you something else. Wake up. If you fall asleep, I throw things at you, amen? All right. All right, all right. Look what it says. And all liars. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute now. Everybody in this building, especially him, Especially this guy. Hey, he's so old, you saw him when he kicked his leg. I thought he was going to fall over. I'm just joking. He's my friend. <laughs> but the Bible says, all liars, all of us have lied. So the Bible says, if you ever, 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 ever told one little bitty lie, that will place you into hell because that is sin. And sin cannot get into heaven with the glorious Savior. Amen? It says, shall have their part in the lake with, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we all know we're all going to die someday. But that's not the death this is talking about. That second death means judgment and straight to hell so you're wondering am, am i going am i going to heaven or am i going to hell you ever lied you're going to hell if you don't accept the gift of forgiveness from our savior in heaven look i want you to see just a couple more verses 
In 2 Timothy chapter 3, if you want to turn there, I'm going to get to it. 2 Timothy chapter 3, look what it says. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, that will be in hell. Listen to this. Hell is for those who turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Big word, lasciviousness. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 4. Turn your Bible to Ephesians 4, chapter 19. Here's what it says. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now that big word lascivious, you know what it means? Simply it means reckless. Reckless. It's a simple reckless. So the Bible tells us those who are reckless with the grace of God will be in hell. Now I'm going to make it simple so you grab a hold of it. So when a preacher or anybody else says that you can go to heaven some other way than Jesus Christ, they are being reckless with grace. And when they die, they will go to a place called hell. Because you cannot get to heaven except through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Good works won't get you there. Baptism won't get you there. Praying uh, someone out of hell won't get them there. There is one way, one way only, and that's accepting the wonderful, great gift of God. And when someone goes around and tells other people that they can get to heaven without Jesus, they are being reckless with the grace of God. I don't know if there is a flame hot enough for a person who would do such things as that to the grace of God. The Bible tells us, number one, that the ungodly will be in hell. Number two, hell is for those who are reckless with the grace of God. And number three, hell is for the person denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now you may say, I've never done that before. I've never taken a Bible and ripped the pages out of the Bible. You've never taken your fist and waved it up to heaven towards God and cursed God. You may say, well, I go to church. I believe in God. I believe the Bible. I'm religious. But please understand what a denier of Christ is this morning. A denier of Christ is not shaking a fist and saying, I'll do what I want to do. I'll do it my own way. But the Bible says in John 3, 36, He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. That means those who obey the Bible, those who obey Jesus Christ, and they obey the Word of God, and they receive Jesus Christ in their heart, those people will go to heaven. They will be saved. They will go to heaven. And that's all that needs to be done. I want you to understand. This morning, hell is real. If you sit there in your seat this morning 
and you tell yourself, I, I, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to wait. You may not have tomorrow. You may not have tomorrow. If you knew how many young people that I pulled out of a, a car accident or a fire that were dead, 17-year-olds, I picked up dead bodies, 17-year-olds. I picked a three-year-old baby, baby's body out of a crushed car one time. I've watched people die in front of me. I've, wa I've held people's hand who died who were 14, 15, 16. While you're under the sound of this gospel this morning, and you don't know for sure, you may say, well, I think I, I might, I, I'm just not sure. Today is the day of salvation. Accept Christ. Don't go to hell because you're too proud. Amen? The Bible gives us three illustrations of what hell is all about. What time do I need to be done, preacher? All right, we'll be done around 3 o'clock. Amen? No, I won't do that. I want to show you something. The Bible gives us three illustrations of what hell will be like. Remember the story back in the book of Numbers? Uh, the people of Korah, they decided that, that they didn't like the way Moses was running things. They're like, we don't like the way you're doing it, Moses. Hey, by the way, you better be careful how you mess with the man of God. You may sit out, this is just extra. It got nothing to do with my message, but God just gave it to me. If, if you're sitting out there and your preacher's got a vision... You better get behind that vision. You better not be out in the crowd saying, well, I don't agree with that. You better be careful because that's what these people did. They gathered together and they told Moses that they didn't think God was on his side anymore and they were going to take over. Uh, Moses told them, okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to meet the, tomorrow and we're just going to prove and see whose side God is on. So the next day, the men and the women, the boys and the girls of Korah met with Moses. And Moses said, okay, let's see whose side God is on. All of a sudden, listen, all of a sudden, the ground began to shake. The earth opened up into a bottomless pit and swallowed all the men, the women, and the children up. And even swallowed up their cattle, the Bible says. Can you imagine what that had been like to fall into the earth. You know, the, the Bible tells us that hell is a place that you fall in darkness, always falling, always falling, never able to put your feet on solid ground. Pitch dark, not be able to see anything. Then the earth closed up and suddenly those cries were gone forever. Yet God said, if you want a picture to hell, imagine those people of Korah being destroyed in that bottomless pit. That's what hell is like this morning. There's no reason anyone in here should go to hell because today you were brought to church by people who love you, a pastor who cares about you, sent out soul winners to bring you in so you can get saved today. And Jude... Verse 6 gives another illustration. Turn to your Bible. Look, you should be there. It says, And the angels would kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, it describes the rebellion of Lucifer, the devil. And he led... Uh, against God, one-third of the angels, and they were cast out of heaven, and many of them became demons, but many of them also, in verse 6, are reserved in everlasting darkness, chained up always. You want to know what hell is like? Falling forever in darkness, being chained up forever, never getting loose. Many of them became demons. I want you to understand, God says it can, it is a, a bottomless pit. 
Imagine being chained under darkness forever. Can you imagine the darkness of eternal hell? I don't know about you. I don't really care about darkness. I love the light. Amen. Yet the Bible tells you, if you want a picture of hell, just imagine being in total darkness forever. Bottomless pit, total darkness. Imagine the hell is a place of fire and brimstone. Now I want you to understand, when I was a teenager, when I was 15, I worked at a Burger King. You got Burger Kings here, right? I worked at Burger King when I was a kid in high school. And I was working the French fry station where they make French fries. They put it in that grease at 350 degrees. Very hot. Well, I actually had met my wife at Burger King. She was in high school. That's why I love Burger King. Amen. <laughs> Woo. I can't think of Burger King unless I think about my wife. Amen. She smelled like a burger. Amen. <laughs> But I was working the French fry station in front of the grease. And she was not my wife at the time. She was a teenager too. And, and as teenagers do, they look at girls. And I was staring at her. You know, going, oh my, she is pretty. And while I was staring at her, not paying attention, the little French fry, beep, 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 told me French fries were done. And I'm staring at this girl. I wasn't thinking. I grabbed the, the, the handle to the french fry to pick them up, and I missed the handle. And my hand went into the hot grease up to here. I quit looking at my girlfriend immediately. Woo! My hand submerged in the grease up to here. 350 degrees of heat at hurt more than anything ever hurt before and I ran over and grabbed a bucket of ice and ice water and I stuck my hand in the ice I took it out started burning again it was horrible horrible pain and I stuck it in the ice and waited a while and pulled it back out of the ice and started burning again that went on for hours I could not imagine the pain of that fire burning. Now listen to me. You listen to me. Listen to me well this morning. Hell is a place where you will burn and fire for eternity. You will never get out. The Bible says that uh, uh, the rich man begged for one drop of water on his tongue and you will burn in a flame of fire forever. There'll be no ice. There'll be, listen to me. Do you, want, do you understand what eternity means? Forever and ever 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 this life when you lift about 75 seems long but it bible says our life is but a vapor it comes and it goes forever you will burn in a flame with no relief falling darkness pain suffering if you don't accept Christ as your Savior. You ask me why we preach the gospel the way we preach it? Because I love people. I don't want anybody, not one person, to burn in a hell fire. Never. So I stand and I preach the Bible and I tell the truth and I preach it just like God wants us to preach it. And you need to be saved today. Can you imagine the screams that are going to be taking place in hell? You can't get away from it. People screaming all the time in pain and suffering. That's what hell is about. The cries. 
Sodom and Gomorrah. Here's the good news. Here's the good news. Hey, you soldiers, here's the good news. The good news, first time visitor, you do not have to go to hell. And you do not have to earn your way to heaven. All you have to do is bow your head. Admit that you are a sinner and you need Jesus Christ to forgive you. Repent of your sins and he will save you now. So when the invitation takes place, and it will in just a minute, when we ask you to make a decision, Listen, let me say if you can understand what I'm about to say. When in America, when you have a funeral, we give flowers. Do you do that here? Okay, so flowers at the funeral. Listen, listen to me, and I'm going to close. The funeral, the flowers that are going to be at your funeral could be in the flower shop this moment. Those flowers are shipped in and put in the flower shop and they're put in the refrigerator. They're only good for a little time and then they have to throw them away. Your flowers could be sitting in the flower shop this morning. You don't know how long you're going to live. So you better, when the Holy Spirit of God speaks to you, you better call upon the Lord. You better ask Him to save you because it's that simple. Jesus did all the work. He was placed on the cross. His hands were nailed to the cross. He shed his blood. He died. He literally died. And he beat death for us. So all we have to do now is trust that he did that for us and call upon him and it's all done. You don't have to worry about the darkness or the flame or the burning or any of that. You will go to heaven, my friend. And let me tell you something. The Lord didn't put a lot about heaven in the Bible. You want to know why? Because it is so great and so awesome that if we knew what it was like, we'd want to get there quicker than what we should get there. So praise the Lord. You can go to heaven today. then I'll close with this thought. I know I'm talking to a crowd of people. I have been in the ministry for 20 years full time. I've preached all over this world. Philippines, America, Israel, Madagascar, Africa. I've been everywhere preaching. And here's what I'm saying this for. There are probably church members sitting in this church. Church members who show up for soul winning. Church members who give their tithes and offerings this morning. And, you, and if you were to die today, some of you will go straight into that fire and flame because you never trusted Jesus Christ. You're relying on your ability up here, but you got to know Jesus Christ right here. I know Christ as my Savior. He is my Savior. And I'm not going to go to hell for nobody. So you shouldn't either. You know what you think? Well, I don't want to go forward. I've been a member of this church forever. You know what? That may, this may be your last altar call. You may never get another chance to hear the gospel again. And you wait. You wait until the next time. And if you die, all that work you did will be for nothing. And all you first-time visitors, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for another day. Get saved today because my Lord wants you to get saved right now. So how about you? What are you going to do now that I gave you the truth? I know you've heard the truth before. This is a great man of God, but sometimes we just don't listen. So I'm, I'm encouraging you, I'm begging you to accept Christ today because tomorrow may 
never come. Pastor. I believe the message is clear this morning. Amen. Alam nyo, meron tayo mga maling paniniwala, mga maling uh, natatanggap mula sa ibang mga preachers, uh, sa iba't ibang panig ng ating bansa. Naririnig natin na ang Diyos ay pagmama, pag-ibig at hindi tayo dadalhin sa impyerno. Kung ipagpapatuloy nyo, mga kapatid, ang pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos dito sa binasa natin mula sa Jude, may meron po dito menensyon ng mga personalities ang, ang, ang si Jude. Nandiyan po yung mga tao ng Diyos na bahagi doon sa tao na yun iniligtas ng Diyos at bahagi ay dinestroy, sabi ng Biblia. Ang iba po doon ay merong sinulat pa po dito yung angels which kept not their first state. Nandiyan dito yung mga personalities na, na, na nakita na ho ang kagandahan ng Diyos. Nakasama nila ang Panginoon. Narinig na mismo nila ang Diyos. Ang tinig ng Diyos. Nagsasalita sa kanila. But the truth is, ang problema kapatid is, they did not listen to God. Wala akong pagkakaiba yan dito. Maging anumang klase ng tao tayo dito. Sabi nga kanina ni Brother Bill, maaaring member ka ng church na ito. Maaaring kumanta ka na sa choir. Maaaring nagturo ka na sa Sunday School. Maaaring nag-usher ka na. Ano mga position meron ka rito, kapatid? Pero kung hindi ka nagtiwala sa Panginoong Jesus Cristo bilang sarili mong tagapagligtas, hindi kaya kang iligtas o dalin sa langit ng iyong position ng iyong religion, ng iyong simbahan, o kanino mang tao nagtiwala ka na maaari sa mga bisita natin ngayon, nagtiwala kayo sa pare, nagtiwala kayo sa pop, nagtiwala kayo sa ministro, nagtiwala kayo sa mabuti niyong gawa, nagtiwala kayo sa iyong reliyon, pero aliman sa mga bagay na yon, hindi ka kayo dahil kayang dalhin sa langit at hindi kayo kayang dal- iligtas sa impyerno. There's only one person that can bring you to, to the Father, and that is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. Trust Him and not your religion. Trust Him and not your good works. Trust Him and not your money. Trust Him and not the Pope, not the ministers, not Mary. No other person that can bring you there. For there's no other name under heaven whereby a man can be saved except the name Christ Jesus. He's the only one that, bring, that can save you. Sa kanya po tayo magtitiwala. It is not a joke. This is no fun. Wag ho natin biro-biroin ito. Hindi kayo. Yung pagpunta nyo rito sa simbahan, maaring yung iba sa inyo, Navy men, sumunod lang kayo kay Captain Chavez. Pero, tandaan nyo ito. Ang pagpunta nyo rito, hindi aksidente. Ginising na kayo ng Diyos. If you will not put your trust in Him, and you keep trusting the man and your good works, one day you will wake up in hell. You will wake up in hell. And you, maalala nyo kung gaano nyo nawala, na lost yung opportunity ninyo. Pagkakataon na sana kayo maligtas. There's a chance to get saved. God is always giving us a chance to get saved. God is always giving us a chance to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. But once you miss it, and deny it and reject it you lost the opportunity so this morning sa mga bisita po namin ngayon magandang opportunity po ito pagkakataon nyo po ito mga, kapatid, mga kaibigan po namin mga bisita hindi po kasi inyo naglalako ng reliyon ito po nasa Baptist Church kayo pero Baptist Church cannot bring you to heaven I am the pastor of this church but I am the pastor, but I cannot bring you to heaven. I can preach. He can preach. He preached this morning. He preached the gospel. And I can preach the gospel. That gospel, Jesus Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection is the only way to heaven. But once you miss it and you trust your own religion, that will bring you to hell. And one day, just like the rich man, when he died, he woke up in hell. In a burning fire. Na hindi na po namamatay. It's not a joke. Kanina, kinikwento ni Brother Bill yung kayo natubog sa, 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 sa mantika. Kapatid, 
kaibigan, marami po akong kwento niya tungkol sa bagay niya. Nakakita po ako personally na nasunog ng buong katawan. And imagine, hindi naman po yan binandage ang buong katawan niya nung siya nasunog. Ang problema, alam niyo kung ano dumating, nung gabi na na siya makatulog, hindi siya makahiga kasi sunog ang buong katawan. Hindi siya makaupo kasi buong katawan. Alam niyo, nagigising na lamang ho yung nanay niya na nanginginig, nakita niya, may, may umuungol. Mm-hmm. Pagod na yung bata, katatayo. Pagod na yung bata sa kanyang posisyon. Hindi, niya, hindi siya makaikot ng katulad ng pagtulog natin na merong, merong nakakapagpahinga talaga. But you know what? I'm telling you, gaano pa kaya sa impyerno? Nang sabi ng Biblia, sa impyerno ay umaalingaw-ngaw ang tinig ng pagdurusa magpakailan-kailan pa man. Kung merong umaalingaw-ngaw sa impyerno na tinig ng pagdurusa, merong nagdudusa magpakailan-kailan pa man. And the smoke of their torments ascended up forever and forever. Hindi po, huwag natin biru-biruin ito. Sa mga lasinggero, sa mga kapag kalasing kayo, madali lang magbiru ng impyerno eh. Sasabihin nyo, di ba, Ale? Sa impyerno, may airco na. Walang pwede makarating ng, 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 ng air conditioner. Ng air conditioner sa impyerno. Kahit na yung mga technician, hindi makarating ng impyerno na. Maaari makarating man sila sa impyerno. Ang mga technician, mga, mga technician ng uh, air conditioner. Pero ang problema, wala ng miralko sa impyerno. Huwag niyong biruin ang impyerno. Maaari ngayon makangiti ka, pero tama yung sabi ni Brother Bill. Hindi, walang katiyakan ng buhay mo bukas. Walang katiyakan. It's only by the grace of God na nakaupo tayo rito at nakapakinig tayo mga kapatid na mensahe ng Diyos. Binigyan pa tayo ng pagkakataon ng Diyos na makapakinig. Sa mga bisita po namin ngayon, hindi religion again, hindi religion ang inalok namin sa inyo. Ang inalok namin sa inyo ay ang Panginoong sa Kristo. Sapagat bukas, huwag mong ipagmalaki ang muscle mo. Huwag mong ipagmalaki yung mga vitamins and, 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 and uh, supplements na iniinom mo. Huwag mong ipagmalaki yung kinain mo mamaya. Mamaya lang, ilalabas mo na yan, marumi na yan. Pero, yeah, pwede ka, maaaring sapagkat masipag ka, makakahanap ka ng pagkain mo ngayon. Pero ang pagkain ay hindi garantiya ng buhay sapagkat may hawak ng buhay ay ang Diyos. Maraming kumakain, mismong sa kainan na mamatay. Huwag mong ipagmalaki ang pagkain mo. Huwag mong ipagmalaki na may maintenance ka, may gamot ka. Maraming namatay na punong-puno ng maintenance ang kanilang tiyan. Oh, I'm telling you. Sabi nila, ang bawang gamot sa high blood, may mga kapatiran po tayo rito na matay at sung sila na matay at nung bago sila mamatay, naisuka ho nila, yung iba nakita sa loob ng tiyan, sariwang mga bawang. Walang nagawa sa, sa kanilang kamatayan. But I tell you what, sapagkat meron lamang isang Diyos na may hawak ng ating buhay. Diyos lamang may hawak ng ating buhay. All you have to do is to trust and put your trust in Him. For there's no other way than the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we all stand please? Dakila yung Diyos, marami po salamat sa inyong salita. Thank you for using Brother Bill here this morning. Thank you, O God, for this great message. It reminds us that we need to keep going and winning people, O God. We need to go out and win people. Nakikiusap po ako sa inyo, Panginoon. Ngayon, sana'y patuloy na ito po'y umalingaw-ngaw sa aming mga tayo nga. Sa pag-uwi namin ng bahay, wag ho namin kakalimutan na may mga kapatiran kaming unsaved, kapatid sa laman, kap- uh, kamag-anakan, kapit-bahay, Panginoon, that we need to win. Thank you, O oh God, for reminding us. And I beg you to please let this truth, O oh God, rings into the ears of your people. And bless the invitation, save the unsaved, and baptize the converts. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. God is speaking to your hearts through that message this morning. Just step out of your seats and come forward, kneel down, and talk to God. Let's make business with God this morning. Let's do it.
Nakilang Diyos, marami pong salamat sa ginawa niyo po sa aming kalagitnaan and thank you again for your people who came forward, oh God. And you've heard their groanings, oh God. You've heard their begging, oh God, for their loved ones to get saved. Nawa po, ipakinggan niyo po ang kanilang pakiusap, Panginoon. At sa mga taong ligtas na nandito po sa aming kalagitnaan, sa, aming, uh, sa loob ng building na ito, Panginoon, sa mga bisita po namin, iligtas niyo po ang mga hindi paligtas. Nakikiusap po ako sa inyo. Huwag niyo po silang palabasin na wala pong katiyakan ng kalangitan. Ayaw po namin, ma- alam niyo po ang aming puso at gayon po ang rason kung bakit in-invite po namin sila, Panginoon. Kaya po namin sila invite that they might get saved. na rin niyo po sila rito, Panginoon. Kayo pong patuloy na gumawa sa buhay po nila. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan po ni Jesus. Amen. Back to your seats, please. At para sa